Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time, is it not? Amen. God has been good to us all week long, and we're happy to be back into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to get ready to do our morning hymn. Our morning hymn is hymn 216. You'll see a hymn book in front of you, hymn 216, that possibly will be on the screen. Hymn 216, when the roll is called up yonder. How many, how many of you plan to go to heaven? There's a, another song just came to mind. So everybody talking about heaven ain't going, but that's another song. <laughs> That's another song. How many you plan on going? Amen. Amen. Him 216, when the roll is called up yonder. Now you got we're gonna reach way back. Let us stand together. Him 216. Him 216. When the roll is called up yonder. Let's sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Come on, say, let's make it out. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us lay before the master from the dawn to second sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, and through the course one more time. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. You may be seated. How many know that God is great? Amen. God is great. In spite, in spite of who we are, God is great. Regardless of what I get into, God is still great. Sing it with us if you know how great is our God. How great? Let's 
we are so thankful that you are our God and you claim us as your children. We thank you, Father, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us and counsels us and directs us. We thank you for your presence this morning. Continue to be with us this morning. Be with our speaker of the hour, Pastor Father God, as he stand before your people. Help us to open our ears and hear what the Spirit has to say. Forgive us our sins, Father God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is our prayer in the worthy, in the wonderful, in the magnificent name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let God's children say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Sabbath. Can you all hear me? The songwriter said, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. Do we have any guests here today? If so, would you please stand? Any guests here today? Amen. Welcome. We welcome you to Longview Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. We hope that you receive a rich blessing. We thank you so much for coming to worship with us today, and please come again. I have a couple of announcements. On August the 5th, we're having a community block party. August the 5th, community block party. All are invited to attend. Please bring your children, cousins, cousin them, family members, neighbors. Tell anyone you can to come and celebrate and give away free school supplies and do things for the children. And everyone can, can be is invited. Also, I have um, two more. Communion is on August the 11th. Communion is on August the 11th. Also, there's a business meeting. There's a what? Business meeting on August the 11th. On what day I say? August the 11th. Thank you and have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Would you just look at your neighbor and say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Were you really glad? It's something about being in the house of the Lord. There's a lot of houses you can be in today. You could be in the White House, or you could be in the, 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 the drug house, or you could be in the jail house. But thank God you're in the house of the Lord. I'm glad that God has given us the ability to worship him in spirit and in truth today. Uh, we are going to have a block party. And anybody knows anything about Pastor Horton, Parties are one of the number one things I like. We don't have enough parties in the church. We need to have some, some mo. Y'all hear me? Some, some mo parties. Amen. Does anybody like parties? Are, are y'all are party people? I think parties are a wonderful thing to have. And so I'm going to invite my, my youth director to come and share with us about the block party this morning. Make sure. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. As we getting ready to go back to school, you know, school teachers ask questions. So, and Christina started it off. What is next week? Block party. Block party. Have you invited someone to come uh -oh. and join uh -oh. us? Have you volunteered to be a part of the block yeah. party, such as attending a table? Have you ordered your gorgeous shirts? Right. We want to represent, um, be represented well here at Longview. We have had so many different organizations to ask about the block party, who's going to set up tables, um, care practic practice, yeah, I can't, um, care practice, care practice, yeah, <laughs> sorry. They will be here, they will give free uh, assessments. For you, we have Shelby Cares, who's connected with UT Health Science Center. They'll be here doing screening. Um, we have had other organization nonprofits who would donate supplies and items. So we are so so excited to be um, sponsoring this block party. So we just need all of your help. It's not just a youth event; it's a church-wide event. Amen. We want to show the community that we are here for them. We may not can help them in 
some ways that they need to, but we can show them what we have to offer. And if we don't have anything else to offer, we have a smile and we have the love of Christ and we want to love on our neighbors and our community. So please, please, if you have not signed up for a specific area, please see Sister Ayanna Boyd or Clint Mason and they'll make sure that you have a spot so that the community can see our shining face um, and see God through us so that we can help our community and be a beacon of light. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are we're excited about a number of things that we're doing. Um, this past Sunday, we had a health cooking class. Did anybody come to the health cooking class? Did y'all enjoy the food? Was the food pretty good? Uh, that was a that was I didn't make it until the end, but I sure enjoyed the food. It's 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 great to have healthy food. I don't know how to cook it, but I sure enough know how to eat it. Praise God. Praise God. And so I'm thankful for the health ministry team. They did a marvelous job in making sure we had a successful, healthful cooking class. Also, we are, we're ending up next week our harvest camp. We, we did harvest camp at the beginning of June all the way to the 4th of August. And we're so thankful for all of you all that volunteered, that participated, that prayed, that came out, and we have made a number of uh, contacts with people. In fact, today, we have people that are going to be baptized because of the Harvest Camp. Come on and say amen. In fact, I'm going to ask them to come up right here. All of you all just come up and stand with me right here, and we're going to read uh, the alternate baptismal vows for them. And um, we're so thankful that each one of them could be here today. I have some other people that might get baptized as well. Um, we have some people that, that are going to be rebaptized. I don't see them just yet, but maybe they'll come a little later. All right, I'm going to introduce the different people. There's a lady that lives right across the street from the church. Sister Cowan, Elder Cowan, gave them literature about the, block, the, the, the uh, harvest camp, and she has... How many grandchildren do you have? I have 15. 15 grandchildren. <laughs> Miss, Miss Adair has 15 grandchildren, and she brought her children, her grandchildren, and she sent them to camp. Miss Adair, we start giving her Bible studies and her children Bible studies, and she said that she wanted to join the church. In fact, Claude, she said she wanted to be a part of the choir. Come on and say amen. Come on and say amen. Isn't God good? She lives right across the street from the church. And we're thankful that God has been blessing Miss Adair. We know God is going to keep you by his grace. And we're thankful for your grandkids. And we're going to keep on. This is the beginning of discipleship. Amen. This is the beginning of discipleship. Then we have this other lovely family here. This is, this is a family. This young man comes to our camp. And I'm going to tell something else about him. Uh, I would have him to sing because he, 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 has a, he has a good singing voice. He gets kind of shy, but, but he, was singing, he was singing to the girls at camp. So uh, I, I enjoyed that singing that he was doing. He was, he was crooning to those girls. So he, he had some talent, all right? This is Wisdom. This is Wisdom. Uh, he likes to be called, what's that name you like to be called? Victor. Wisdom, Victor. And the last name? Ramsey. Victor Ramsey. We call him Wisdom, Okay. And um, he, he wants us to call him Victor, but we'll call him Wisdom Victor, okay? We're so glad that he could be here with us today. He, he was taking money from me because I, I give you some opportunities. If you know the commandments or if you can repeat Bible texts, I give you some money. And he got, I think about five, six dollars or something like that. Praise God. All right. Praise God for that. We have Miss Whiteside. That's Miss Patricia Whiteside that is the mother of Wisdom. And she also wants to follow God all the way and become a member of the church. We're so thankful that you all are part. Miss Whiteside is an ordained minister. She, she studied the word of God, and she's real, she's real shy. She lets other people, but she, she's going to lead out in the church. There's going to be some things. The Holy Spirit's got some things for her to do. She don't even know about them right now. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, 
what the Lord's going to do through her. And I'm thankful that the Lord is just using you and brought you to this, this church for this particular time. She wants to, to use all her gifts for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're so thankful that you've decided to do that. This young man is also, we've got him enrolled in Memphis Adventist Academy. Come on and say amen. Come on and say amen. We're, we're going to be doing discipling on a long-term basis. Is that all right? I'm going to read the baptismal vows. Uh, these are the alternate vows. There's three vows that I'm going to read. And I'd like for you all to say I do on each one of the vows. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live a life, a, a, your life in a saving relationship with him? Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? And the last one, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithe and offering, and a life of service. All right. We have our, our, our person is going to be rebaptized. Give me your name one more time. Frida Craft. Frida, Frida Craft. We baptized Frida, but she wants to start over with God again. Let's say amen. All right. I saw him. Yeah. And yeah, Wisdom's dad is here. Just to raise your hand. Let's, praise God. Praise God. I'd like to have a motion from our church that these people, okay, thank you. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Oh, and the devil has no vote. We're, like, we're going to do the baptism at the end of our service today. So we're going to just let you all sit down. When I, when I end the service, then you all go back and we'll get the baptism going, all right? We're going to do you guys first, and then we'll do you all, all right? All right, you all can maybe be seated. But go ahead and get changed. Uh, come on and say praise God. You know, discipleship is what we're talking about for these last few weeks, and it's not going to be easy to disciple. We want a long-term relationship. Does that make sense? We want a long-term relationship, and it, that takes a lot of time. Um, so I'm going to pray that you will continually work with people at the block party. That's another opportunity for us to disciple. And I pray that God will continually bless you and um, just keep you by his grace. I have to tell you that I've had my, my grandson with me this week. He's, you'll, you'll hear from him sometime in church today, I'm sure. Uh, his name is Austin. So if you all see Austin, make sure you go and, and say hello to Austin. He, he may say hello, he may not. He's got a little attitude every now and then. But it's so good to have, it, isn't it good to have grandchildren? How many people know grandparents are the smartest people in the world? Hallelujah. All right, we're going to continue with our service for today. The song says, my life is in your hands. Let's start it right here, Kwai. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken. Just lift your hands and say, Just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Can we do that first? verse one more time you don't have to worry you don't have to worry and don't you be afraid joy come 
I know they're going to make it. It's, it's great to know that your life is in the hands of God. That's the safest place for it to be, in the hands of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you so much, choir, for blessing us with that song today. 
My goal is to preach a shorter sermon because we've got a lot going on. At the end of our sermon, we're going to acknowledge our seniors that graduated from high school. Isn't that awesome? I see a, a few of them already. We want to acknowledge all of our seniors. And so while I'm changing clothes for the baptism, we will acknowledge our seniors at that time. Man, it's really good to just be in God's house. I've been doing this series on discipleship. I believe that every person that loves God is called to be a disciple. And um, that's just what God wants us to be. So I want to challenge you and, and everybody else to, to, to make this sermon your sermon. It's, um, it's going to be where you put yourself in being the disciple that God wants you to be. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, which art in heaven, speak through your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, the, the, sec, the, the, the section or the, the title that I would name this sermon is The Last Words of Jesus. The Last Words of Jesus. It's amazing to me that God, before he left this earth, he had a meeting place that he told his disciples to meet him. It was in Galilee. <clears throat> and in Galilee, they were to meet. And usually in Galilee, there was a particular mountain that they knew that they were going to meet on. It was a lunching pad. It was where Jesus would go early in the morning and talk with his father. Do you, do you have a place where you talk with your heavenly father? Uh, it was his place of sacred abode in Galilee on this mountain, he told them that after I resurrect, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. And I believe not only just 11 disciples, but there were thousands of disciples that probably wanted to be there. And maybe there was more than just 11. Uh, one time Paul said there was 500 people that saw Jesus. And so Galilee was just the spot where Jesus was taking off. And he gave his disciples some last words. Some last words, last instructions, last promise. And this is what happened in Galilee. I want you to turn to it in your Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. And I want you to look at it because that's, our, that's what we've been going through for the last three weeks or so, the last words of Jesus. Now, to be a disciple is interesting. To be a disciple is, is actually to re reproducing the character, the ways, and the mission of Jesus in those around us, expecting them to multiply the same in others. That's, that's one definition of discipleship. Jesus gave a, a definition of it. He said in John 6, 35, by this will all men know that you're my disciples if you what? Love one another. Every disciple has to love everybody. Amen? Love is imperative for discipleship. So in this scripture text, I want you to listen carefully as you hear it today. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Did you see it in your text? You kind of made it live so you can feel it, so you can hear it but it's all 
in the Word of God. Now, our church has a mission. Long ago, we said that our mission was, would you read this to me, with me? Reflecting Christ by helping. That is discipling. That's what discipling is all about. Everything we do should be that. Okay? That is what God has required of us. Our mission at the Longview Heights Church is to reflect Christ. He's the best person to look like. Amen? You're not to try to look like the pastor. You're trying to look like Christ. Now, the closer you come to Christ, the more you see of your inadequacies. The more you see of you. Now, if I compare myself to somebody else, I might can look good. But when I compare myself to Christ, there's always some problems in my life. I can never say I'm perfect when I compare myself to Christ. The problem often is, is that we compare ourselves with other people. And when you do that, you can either look good or you can look bad. But it really doesn't matter because God has not asked you to compare yourself with other people. In fact, when you see other people, often they will turn you the wrong way. Am I right about it? Sometimes in the church, you have some people that will do some things and say some things that make you wonder if you're in the right church. Am I right about it? But God has never asked you to look at the people. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, don't look at me. Don't look at me. All right. Uh, I, I, I know we look at each other, but, but every now and then we compare ourselves and we start looking. Well, she, she dresses that way. I can dress that way too. He said that. Well, I can say that too. No, compare yourself with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> when you do that, you'll always say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Am I right about it? The good news is that when you come to Christ and you compare yourself with Christ, he covers you. Hallelujah. So all your filthiness, all, all of my evilness, and I got some evilness in me, believe it or not. I have some stuff in me that I don't want nobody to know about. But God covers us with his righteousness. Aren't you thankful today that they haven't put on CNN all the stuff that you've been doing? They haven't put on Fox or they haven't put on MSNBC all your pipes. In fact, God knows even what you're thinking. Some of y'all are too old to do it. And if you were young enough, you'd try it. Help me, Holy Ghost. If you're young, you can't wear that dress no more. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can't, you can't go, you can't dance like that no more. You talk about, her, oh, she don't have to be dancing like that. You just wish you, you remember when you used to do it. You used to have hair. Help me, Holy Ghost. You, you used to be much lighter than what you are today. But God, in his infinite wisdom, loves us even though we're messed up. Isn't that good? And when we reflect Christ, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. I'm not concerned about how you're living. I don't have enough time to look at you. I can barely keep up with myself. Am I right about it? I can bear. In fact, I can't keep up. I need Jesus to help me with that. So I want to be clear that when we reflect Christ, we have no reason to complain about others. When we reflect Christ, we have no reason to criticize. I know it's going to get quiet. When we, when we reflect Christ, you can't quit because Christ has not quit on you. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. So, so, so this, is, this is our mission, reflecting Christ by connecting, helping, inspiring, serving, and teaching. Whatever you're doing in the church, that's what you ought to be doing. That's really discipleship. And God, God, and God calls us to do it. That's amazing to me. God, 
Why didn't he just ask the angels to do it? But he calls you and me that have problems. Don't, don't y'all have some problems? Ellen White writes in the book Acts of the Apostles, enfeeble and defective as it may appear, the church is the one object upon which God bestows in a special sense his supreme regard. It is the theater of his grace in which he delights to reveal his power to transform hearts. God has us in his theater. And we are not in the audience. We're on the stage. And regardless of how bad we are, he's able to transform you. He's able to transform me. He's able to make us clean and, and change our thoughts. He's, and you know what? He does it to enfeeble and defective people. He does it to people that have mental illness. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have people in the church that, that need help. Oh, yes, we do. That's what the church is for. Amen? And so don't get upset when people in the church and they're acting stupid. Don't get mad when people in the church are disrespectful, when they don't do the right thing, because the church is defective. Everybody's defective. Everybody's damaged goods in the church. Ain't nobody perfect in the church. God always takes imperfect people and makes them better. If you were perfect, you don't need Jesus. Jesus said, the healthy doesn't need a physician. I've come not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. In a special sense, God bestows his supreme regard. You know, I, I, I'm thinking that God loves the church. Isn't that awesome? Regardless, of, that's why you shouldn't talk about the church. That's why when you come home today or next week or whatever, you shouldn't down the church because the church is God's wife. The church is the wife of Jesus. And when you talk about the church, you're actually talking about Jesus. If you don't like what the church is doing, you do something better. Oh, I, I, I got to go on. I, that, that sounds too, too much like right to me. The last words of Jesus that we covered was that, number one, Jesus has given us authority. Excusia, or ecusia is the, is the Greek word. It's not the word uh, for dynamite. It is the word for authority. God said, all authority is given to me. I'm going to give it to you as disciples. So you can go anywhere you want to go. You can, and, and, I, and you have my authority to be with you. Not only that, God says, I want you to make disciples. I want you to make people that are following Christ. I want, you to, I want you to encourage people to do the same thing that Jesus did. That's what making disciples is all about. The third word that he gave is I want you to teach, teaching them to observe all things. See, when we baptize people, that's the beginning. We have to continually teach. Are you listening to me today? There is never a point in your Christian existence where you know it all. You may have been in the church for a hundred years, you still don't know it all. Am I right about it? Everybody is a learner. And if you ever get to the point where you can't learn, then you need to die. Amen. Because learners are the ones that can teach others. I don't need you to pray for me because I am trying to go back to school, but I'm procrastinating. There are some things I need to learn. And it's so easy to procrastinate. I mean, I haven't been to school in 40 years. And to go back again is going to be a challenge. But would you pray for me? Because I think if you're not learning, you're not significant. There's nothing that you're really doing. We all have to learn. Am I right about it? If you go through the week and you haven't learned anything, you've wasted that week. Do you know what? You don't have to go to the internet to learn. You can go to the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the one for me. 
I can stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. That's the best book to learn from. Can I get a witness? We are not only to learn, but we are to learn it and we are to live it ourselves. Doesn't make sense for you to have all those books on your, 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 your shelf, all the, the Revelation seminars, all the Bible studies, and you don't give no Bible studies. You don't share anything with anybody else. Teaching is not something that you just teach yourself. You got to help teach somebody else. I know I'm telling the truth. Those were the, those were the three. This is the next thing that Jesus asked us to be as disciples. Those are the ones I covered already. Jesus said at the end, I will be with you how long? Always. Isn't that an awesome text? I will be with you always. This is the promise of the last words. I like that. Now, first of all, this is a paradoxical promise. Jesus was getting ready to leave, wasn't he? He was, he was getting ready to rise up and go to his father. How could he say to them, I'm going to be with you always, but then I'm leaving? It's two statements that seem like they're conflicting. He was leaving, but he was saying, I'm going to be with you always. I realized what he meant. He said, you've been around me so long. You've seen me so many times. You've been with me uh, in this situation, in that situation. You prayed with me. You saw me so many different places, disciples, that when I leave, my presence is inside of you. And wherever you go, you're bringing me with you. Hallelujah. The disciple of Christ is so close to Christ that wherever they go, they have the presence of Christ with them. Is anybody listening to me today? Not only do you have his presence, but you have his spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. And because he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send my spirit. And so wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is. Have you ever had the Holy Spirit speak to you and say, don't go down that street? Have, it, have, it, have the Holy Spirit ever said, don't, don't answer that phone call? Has, has, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Holy Spirit will work in your life and will speak to you. When you turn to the right and to the left, the Bible says there will be a voice behind you and say, this is the way, walk ye in it. The Christian disciple has the Holy Spirit and he's always there. It's a paradoxical promise. Not only is it a paradoxical promise, it's a promise of protection. It's a promise of protection. I will be with you always. When you go through the storm, does anybody go through some storms every now and then? When you went to the storms, was Jesus with you? Was Jesus right by your side? Did you know that he was leading you? He said, I'll be with you in the storm. I'll be with you when you fall into sin. Everybody's falling into sin. And if Jesus wasn't with you, you'd be in trouble. I remember growing up, they used to tell us, if you go into the party where they're drinking and smoking and doing drugs, when you go in, the Holy Spirit stays on the outside. Have y'all ever heard that before? But that's, that's what they taught us. They said the angels, the Spirit of God, won't, won't go with you in there. But that was some incorrect theology. When you are in the worst situation, that's when you need Jesus. When you're doing something wrong, that's when you need Jesus. When I go up to the store and the little Debbie is talking to me, I need Jesus. Are y'all listening to me? And when I, when I go to Cheesecake Factory, I know Cheesecake is there. And the Holy Spirit said, no, you don't. It's the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When you get in that car, I know some of y'all too old to remember this. And you all by yourself and it's real late at night and somebody's talking to you, and you know you shouldn't be listening to what they're saying because you know it's not of God. It is the Holy Spirit that says, look, we, we got to go home. We can't turn on the light. Oh, y'all not y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking about today. The Holy Spirit is always there 
to protect you and to keep you even in sin, even if you fall into sin. It is the Holy Spirit that brings you back to repentance. You don't repent on your own. It is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is there for protection. The Holy Spirit is there for protection against Satan. How many people know we have an enemy? And he doesn't like you. If it was up to him, he'd rip the throats out of the birds to sing. He hates every disciple. And he has marked you for deletion. But you don't have to worry about Satan. You don't have to worry about kicking him out the church. You don't have to worry about telling him where to go. All you have to do is connect yourself with Jesus. And Jesus will protect you against Satan. Like that song the kids, the kids used to sing, with Jesus as the captain, we can smile at the storm as we go sailing by. Whatever you go, but the promise is that Jesus will always be with you. And then the last promise that I want to talk about is promise of Christ's perpetual presence. Promise of Christ's perpetual presence. Every now and then, you lose power. I remember many years ago, we were living in New Mexico, and we came home from church, and we turned the lights on, and the lights didn't come on. You remember that? We turned the lights on, and, and it wasn't a storm. Help me, Holy Ghost. It, it, it wasn't a power outage. So the question we ask is, did you pay the light bill? Did you, have, has anybody been there before? Did you pay? The light bill, come to find out that when your light's off, does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's hard to live with your lights off. It's not easy to live with your lights off. And every now and then, it's our fault that the lights are off because we didn't pay the light bill. But every now and then, a storm comes, and, and we don't have any power. The good news about the gospel is that when Jesus says, I will always be with you, we have a perpetual presence. Nothing can turn it off. Hallelujah. You miss your shouting point right there. Christians don't know when to shout. That's a time to say, thank you, Jesus. Even when you don't do what you're supposed to do, even when you're not living the way you're supposed to live, the Holy Spirit, Jesus got perpetual, uncut presence with you. Hallelujah. That's a great God, isn't it? That's a God that loves you. He loves you unconditionally. And regardless of what you go through, regardless of what you have to face, he's right there by your side. Isn't that good news? The text says, I will always be with you. I'm trying to change to the next slide. I will always be with you. Let me try one more time. There we go. Jesus wants to be with you. He doesn't want to follow you. He wants to be with you. He wants to be right by your side. He wants to be so close to you that whenever you go through something, before you even go through it, you can call on his name. He wants you to be able to turn to him like the flower turns to the sun. One day Jesus is coming back again. One day he's going to come back and he's coming back to a church that loves him. A church that has given their lives to him. He's coming back for people that are disciples. You can't be on the fence with discipleship. Either you are a disciple or you're not a disciple. And if you're a disciple, the proof of your discipleship is that you tell somebody else what Christ has done for you. You can't make anybody join the church. You can't make anybody get baptized, but you can live a life of discipleship. You don't have to go to Africa. You don't have to go to South America. You can brighten the corner where you are. You can, right in your home, you can be a disciple. The good news is that you don't disciple alone. Jesus says that I'm going to walk with you. I will be with you always. I will be with you always. Does anybody want to be a disciple? Would you raise your hand today? 
If you want to be a disciple, I'm thankful that the God we serve has, has always opened the door for disciples. He doesn't give you a test. He doesn't say, oh, well, we're not accepting disciples today. He accepts everybody. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how old, how young you are. He loves you, and he's willing to walk with you. He's willing to walk with you, to be right by your side. Good news today is we decide either to be a disciple or not to be a disciple. You can't be one and the other at the same time. You have to be one or the other. And today, if you really want to be a disciple for Jesus, will you stand with me today? If you want to be a disciple for Jesus, if that's what you want. And I hope you're not standing because everyone else is standing. But this is just between you and God. I can't end this service today without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. And maybe there's somebody here today that wants to join this church and be a baptized member of the church. Maybe you realize that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you today. Maybe you need to start over again. Maybe you've already given your life to Christ, but you need to get baptized again. Or maybe this is your first time. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I'm going to invite you to come down today and say, Pastor Horton, I want to follow Jesus all the way. I know God is calling me to be in this baptism. I know God wants me to follow him all the way. And I want to make that decision right now to follow Jesus all the way. I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. He's talking to me. And because of that, I'm going to invite you to come down, whoever you are. My elders are waiting for you. Praise God. My elders are waiting for you. The Holy Spirit has been waiting for you all your life. He wants you to follow him all the way, whoever you are. Oh, yes, we're waiting for you. We're waiting. out there today and you just say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need to make a decision. So just raise your hand and say, would you just pray for me? Whoever you are, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. God sees your hand. It's between you and God. Father, which art in heaven, bless your people today. Fill them with your spirit. Make us your disciples. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today.